against the Houston Rockets, a convincing 122-98 victory over the Houston Rockets. And someone who was there to enjoy it all is my co-host, DeMichael Cole. Now, I'm always glad to have DeMichael join me for Locked On Grizzlies, but I'm not too thrilled when he makes me look bad by looking all dapper and just stylish and everything else. But yet he he didn't get the memo. But DeMichael Cole, how are you, sir? How was the experience in Houston on Sunday as the Grizzlies ended the road trip with a convincing victory? Sean, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, and you know what, Sean? If I would have if I would have known that that me dressing up would have made you feel this way, then I simply I would have just went to the game in a t-shirt and you know covered the game in a t-shirt. I think that would have been with that? That's, I, I go I go in a Grizzlies t-shirt and gym shorts all the time. It's it's <laughs> a perfect ensemble. No, I mean you look good. Just, just yeah, hey, I just I just had to I had to throw it out there you know, just to make <laughs> yeah, the rest of us look bad. All right. <laughs> Appreciate you, Sean, but but it's it's been a fun it's been a fun time in Houston, you know. And anytime I come on the road, you know, one of the main things you watch for is just John Morant interaction from the fans, and and you know, you get a lot of that. I think today for me personally, it was just borderline kind of annoying at a certain point because you got like the people like, hey John, hey John, they're screaming, hey John on the bench, and he's on the bench. You know, John's wearing a hoodie, so you can't really recognize him. So you have to like pretty much stare him down and watch his movements to figure out it's him. But superstar, you know, he. He attracts that attention. Um, that was good to see. And you know, this game, it was it was weird because it started to feel like, you know, throughout the first half, it had that same feel as the last matchup against Houston, whereas the Grizzlies led and they led comfortably, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 points for the most part, but they were supposed to be up more. They were supposed to put this team away quicker. And you just had the thought, thoughts went through your head, like, man, you know, they're playing with fire again. If this team gets hot. It can make for a long day, but Sean, it didn't turn out that way. Um, a lot of the Grizzlies players actually end up getting hot. I mean, DeAnthony Melton, Dylan Brooks had his best game since returning. And, and you know, uh, Tyus Jones stepped up again uh, in starting in front of John Morant with, with an injured John Morant out. So that was big, too. Absolutely. And, of course, you can find the show at Locked on Grizz, myself at Stats SAC, to Michael Cole, at the Michael C on Twitter, and obviously the show wherever podcasts are available. And also you can find it free here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button below. But to Michael Cole, you, you mentioned it directly. Listen, as of late, the Grizzlies have just been getting off to excellent starts in the first quarter. They did it again today. I haven't looked at the stats yet, but you know, the streak of the Grizzlies having 30 plus point first quarters has been incredible. So they've either been able to take control of games early or they, they've they been taking control of. It's been the other team. It's been a, a wide variance. You know, it, it, it hasn't been a lot of close games where the event, Grizzlies eventually take, took over. But they did it tonight. And here's the way that they did it tonight that was so impressive. It wasn't the offensive rebounds. It wasn't the turnovers. It wasn't just absolutely destroying in the paint. Yes, those things did occur at times, the three-point shooting. This game reminded me a lot of the efforts that they had put forth early in February. Yes, they were playing weaker teams, but the three-point shooting absolutely played a big role. This gives us a glimpse, an idea of what the Grizzlies are going to have to have happen more frequently once we get to the playoffs, the presence of that three-point shooting. Sean, I was just looking at some numbers and and just shooting overall, because we talk about the three-point shooting, and I was looking at their free throw numbers, too. I think they finished four, 14 of 17, but but they were 14 of 15. So I think this was just the 11th time this season where the Grizzlies have shot 40% from three and above 80% from the free throw line. Again, both of those stats, you know, three-point shooting and free throw shooting, the Grizzlies are in the bottom third in the NBA. So if you, I mean, getting both of those, really, really good in one night. I mean, you wouldn't expect the result to be any closer because this is, this was pretty much, I mean, the points in the paint were still there. So when you get the points in the paint and you get that type of shooting and it, and it wasn't just one guy who just got real hot, Sean, you know, I mean, I think the Anthony Melton made four threes. Yes. But you had Jaron Jackson came in in the fourth quarter. He made a couple three pointers. Then you had, you know, earlier than that, I think there was what Dylan, Dylan Brooks, uh, I think every starter except Stephen Adams made two three pointers. So it was it was a pretty wide variance of just continuity throughout the entire lineup. And and I think Zaire made one off the bench as well. Um, the three point ball was falling not just from one guy. It's not like you know a lot of nights, Sean. We see Desmond Bain get hot, make six threes, and then the Grizzlies make ten threes, and the Grizzlies shoot ten of twenty two, and Des made six of them. 
tonight, I mean, it was across the whole, you know, everyone uh, contributed. So that was big. And the other thing that I had talked about in going into this game, while the offensive side of the ball certainly was fluid, you had Desmond Bain and Tyus Jones both with three assists. As you mentioned, five Grizzlies with multiple threes, just very good overall balance. The Grizzlies getting, you know, 14 steals on defense. But the other thing that they did not allow to happen, they did not allow for the Rockets to really get in their groove offensively. You know, this Rockets team, again, the numbers don't really show it, but they are becoming more capable of if they're hitting their shots from distance, they could put 120, 125 on you just like that before you even know it. And so that is something that the Grizzlies did a good job of doing. But the other big thing that stands out in this to Michael Cole, as you mentioned, is that the Grizzlies free throw shooting, it wasn't that they only shot better. They they allowed seven more free throw attempts than they attempted themselves, but they did not let the Rockets have an above average night from the free throw line. 36 free throws in the game earlier this month where the Rockets won, only 24 tonight, and of course 10 of 31 from three. Another thing that stood out was a complete defensive performance, and of course the combination of Dylan Brooks, Jaron Jackson, and others really helped out in that regard. Yeah, and I talked to Dylan Brooks about that after the game because, you know, he, he's 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 one of those guys. He's super honest. You know, Dylan Brooks will say exactly how it is. And he talked about, you know, in that game he missed against the Rockets, uh, not from a bragging perspective, because I asked him, you know, specifically, what did you want to bring to this game that was missing, you know, when Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green combined for 53 points in that win to snap their 12-game losing streak. And he says, you know, physicality. He wanted to be a spark. And I think we saw both of those things. You know, Kevin Porter Jr. struggled. He had air balls. He couldn't get to his spots like he he wanted to. He was frustrated. You could see it on his face. You could see it where he was just, he, you know, he asked for his coach to sub him out at a point. Like he, he was frustrated. Jalen Green, and I don't think he was as frustrated, but he wasn't, you know, wasn't making shots either. So, I mean, it's just the Dylan Brooks affair. It's not like he guarded both of them at the same time. But it's a tone setting thing, you know, that goes deeper than just having a player come on the court and guard one person. It goes to the fact that, you know, Dylan Brooks, when he's on the court, he's going to dive. He's going to play with extra energy. And that rubs off. That rubs off on the rest of those guys. And that helps, you know, Desmond Bain. That helps Tyus Jones. That helps Zaire Williams. All those guys are looking at Dylan Brooks because he's the older guy among those wing players. So, Dylan Brooks came back, and I think, you know, in addition to what he did offensively, you know, best game back for him on the offensive end, too. He really set the tone defensively with his, with his defense on Kevin Porter Jr., and I think it just rubbed off. Dylan Brooks plays pissed off, and the reason why he plays pissed off is because he wants to piss everybody else off, everybody else off on the opposing team. And guess what? 95% of the time, it certainly works. But DeMichael Cole, I can tell you this real quickly. I don't know why I keep saying your last name. It just flows together. But regardless of that, I can tell you what works out 100% of the time is you choosing Built Bar to make your day better. Now, DeMichael, I don't know if you enjoy it in the morning or in the afternoon. Morning as a breakfast, afternoon as a snack. But whether it's the puffs or whether it's the bars, whatever it may be, Built Bar is going to make your day better. Provides energy. Healthy substitute to a candy bar, fills you up, gets you going. You go to build.com right now. Not only can you choose from over 18 different flavors and, of course, different variety of options, you get 15% off when you put in the promo code LOCK15. Head to build.com right now, put in the promo code LOCK15, and get 15% off your next order from Built Bar. Now, DeMichael Cole, I'll ask you this. There I did, I did, I did begin. DeMichael, I'll ask you this. I know that you have some experience in Philadelphia, and of course that is Flyers country when it comes to the NHL, but are you a big fan of hockey, sir? I'm not the biggest hockey fan in the world, but but you know, when it comes to something like Bet Online, I, I might I might take my chances with, with hockey. Yeah, hockey is is awesome. And the thing that I'll say is this, is that we'll discuss better line a little bit in the show, a little bit later on the show. But the thing I will say is, when it comes to your waging and betting on sports, not only should you check out betonline.net, but you may also want to check out the Locked On Podcast Network later on today, as we are going to do a very fun but unique perspective when it comes to the NHL trade deadline, starting at 3 o'clock Eastern. Oh, the overwhelming majority. I think all the shows are most of the Locked On NHL Network shows 
are going to be doing live shows at the same time leading up to what is supposed to be an active NHL trade deadline. So after you make Locked On Grizzlies your first listen of the day, make sure you check out the Locked On NHL show of your choices. All of the shows will be going on at the same time. And also, if you like to wager a bit on sports, some trades could lead to some changes in odds and wagers coming up. You may want to check out betonline.net as well when it comes to your wagering and betting needs when it comes to hockey. Woo! That was a lot. But the great thing about Locked On Grizzlies, we've got a lot for you coming up this week. And, of course, the man himself who broke the story on the exciting upcoming event that is ESPN Day in Memphis, to Michael Cole himself. Obviously, he is going to have some great material coming out for us in the commercial appeal over the next few days. And if you enjoy reading it, and I encourage, encourage you to do it, I know I will be. We also want to discuss it here. To Michael, it's going to be an exciting week for you, sir. And I think that you have some fun insight that came out today as well. Can you let us know a little bit? Give us a little bit of a sneak peek about some opinions that may be given on Wednesday. Yeah. So, you know, when people hear ESPN is coming, to, to Memphis, the, the first name that pops up in a lot of people's heads is Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A. Smith is making a trip to Memphis. So I, I had a conversation with him, and, and, and that's, you know, in the story as well. And I thought it was, it was interesting because the conversation wasn't led to, jo, to John Morant, but, well, it didn't start with talking about John Morant. But what happened over the course of the conversation is, you know, Stephen A. started talking about his Knicks fandom. And then, of course, if you know one thing about Knicks fans, they barely missed on two of the biggest point guards in the NBA right now. They had the eighth pick when Steph Curry went seventh, and they had the third pick when John Morant went second. Well, Stephen A., a diehard New York Knicks fan himself, uh, really is still to this day sick to his stomach about how that played out. So in that story, we just talk about that a, a little bit more. And then, of course, with him, Coming, you know, ESPN and, and, and the Memphis perspective there, there's also, also going to be some of that in there. But, yeah, uh, we're going to have a lot more coverage, you know, on commercialappeal.com, just ESPN coming here and, uh, and you know, what to expect from that. I, forgive me if it looks like I was looking around for something, Michael. It was me looking around for my tissue box, and it, it's a long way away. But I was going to see if, if, if Stephen A. needed a, a tissue. Wang, but that's that's what I'll say. Wang. But all joking aside, the, the thing that stands out to me though is that you know I know that there are a lot of polarizing figures, you know, our opinions at least, and figures if you want to call it, then it comes to ESPN. A lot of fun perspectives and things like that from the Grizzlies, from, you know, Kendrick Perkins, who we know has certainly supported yeah. them. DeMichael, what are you most looking forward to? Obviously, the exposure, making sure that obviously John Morant gets his due when it comes to being a star. But what else are you looking for to come from the overall experience that ESPN will bring to Memphis on Wednesday? Yeah, you, you mentioned the exposure, but I want to see, you know, out of this, we need to see people have a better understanding of why the Grizzlies are good outside of John Morant. That's still completely unknown on a national perspective. You know, even any, even in my conversation with Stephen A., uh, I didn't get the sense that he has a really good idea of, and I, I mean, that's what the sense I got. I mean, I could be wrong. I didn't get the sense that, you know, he had a great idea of, you know, those those players and, and what they bring uh, outside of John Morant. But, it, I mean, that's pretty much everyone that I talk to. It's not not just Stephen A. Uh, Desmond Bain is known as a shooter, but a lot of people don't know as, as a cutter, as a facilitator, as we saw with the seven assists against the Houston Rockets and, you know, playing point guard in college and high school and all of that. They don't know about that part of this game that much. They don't know about his pull-up ability off the dribble from three-point range being one of the top three three-point shooters pulling up in the NBA. They mostly know him as a spot-up guy. Dylan Brooks, same way, known as a tough defender, but do people really know, you know, how good he is? Do people understand, you know, what Jaron Jackson Jr. brings to the game at the forward position as compared to the five? Do people understand Brandon Clark and how consistent he is each game? Do people understand the Anthony Milton's defensive impact off of the bench? Uh, Tyus Jones is starting to get his due simply because, you know, ja, it's it's linked to Ja. When Ja is out, they still win. And the automatic, you know, thing to fill in there is, oh, Tyus Jones as a starting point guard handles his own. But I think one thing that, that we need to uh, 
get from this. And I did write in the story, and I'm not sure who the player will be yet, but ESPN is going to kind of profile one player uh, when they when they're here, and and it'll be like a day in the life type thing where they'll you know from the morning you know just center it around that player, what he eats, I guess, and you know what he does to get ready for the game. No word on who that player will be, but but it'd be great, you know, if it's one of those guys. If it's someone like Brandon Clark, you know, first round pick who had a great rookie season, inconsistent second year, and, and this year he's just been off the charts. He's been a you know a key cog to what they're doing. And just the bench overall, I think, you know, people keep asking the question, why are the Grizzlies still winning without Ja Morant? And I believe they're 13 and 2, 14 and 2 now without Ja. And it's a simple answer. It's, it's a simple answer. They are deep. They have a lot of different guys who can do a lot of different things, as we saw in this game. And you had De'Anthony Melton off the bench in, in double figures. And, and you had, you know, what, I think it was four starters in double figures and six players in double figures overall. So, I mean, it's, it's just that simple. They're a deep team. But that's what, that's what I want to see, Sean. Well, I can tell you this, and, and this right here, you don't have to go to ESPN. You don't have to go to, you know, wherever you may go to get your Grizzlies news. I'm here to tell you right now, there is a very, very good chance significant franchise history happens on Wednesday. And if it doesn't happen Wednesday, it's going to happen on Thursday. Last night's game, Desmond Bain made three threes. He has 198 threes on the season this year. I want to repeat that real quick. A Memphis Grizzlies player not named Mike Miller has 198 threes on the season. The significance is this. Desmond Bain is five threes away, DeMichael, from setting the all-time franchise Grizzlies record for threes with 203 in a season. How special would it be for him to be able to do that on the day ESPN is covering it? Plus also... D Dylan Brooks and Jaron Jackson Jr. taking on the threat that is Kevin Durant and his overall ability to influence the game with the Nets. There's going to be, within the game itself, there's going to be some opportunities that ESPN's coverage is really going to put out there for the nation and the basketball world to see, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So, I, and we're, I mean, we're really going to dive into it, you know, uh, on Wednesday's show and, and break that down because it's, it's, I was talking, you know, with Dylan Brooks after the game. And, and, you know, I asked him, you know, how does he feel, you know, in terms of where he is right now? And like I said, very honest guy. So he says, I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not 100%, you know, he said, I'm not there yet. And then he, he goes on to talk about, you know, what he wants to see from himself to get there. And the thing that stood out to me, Sean, was he, he specifically pointed out Wednesday's game. And he said, I want to see how I stack up, you know, against the best. I'm paraphrasing, but he basically said that he wants to see how he stacks up against the best players so he can see where he is. And he pointed out that game specifically. And then he said that behind that. He didn't name drop players, but you know it's on his mind. Kevin Durant's coming to Memphis. Kyrie Irving's coming to Memphis. So that's that's the litmus test game for him, I feel like. He thinks in his return back. Because, you know, at this point, you know, there's no physical limitations. It's just – you know, mentally uh, building yourself back up and, and just, you know, getting back to where you want to be. And he's getting close, he said, but but that game, you know, it's going to be a big one. So watching Dylan Brooks guard those guys, it's, it's going to be fun. Absolutely. Let's let's be honest. You know, the one of the big, one of the reasons why ESPN is coming to Memphis is because of who is going to be there as well. And that's fine. At the end of the day, the Grizzlies want, you know, some of the Grizzlies at least, but the Grizzlies fan base, yes, we love being the underdog. Yes, we love, you know, sometimes being disrespected coming back from that, considered to be the underdog. But we want that exposure. But there is something to say. John Morant and the Grizzlies going against Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, it's going to be amazing to see. But you want to know what else is amazing? When you can make your desire to have an easy way to bet and wager on your favorite sporting events, college basketball, pro basketball, whatever it may be, we're – we're not going to talk about college basketball that much because of what happened on Saturday, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. And speaking of tissue, anywho, when it comes to betting and wagering on sports, whether it be online or whether it be on your mobile device or on the laptop, betonline.net is the best place for you to go. Check it out today. Go to betonline.net for the fastest and easiest way for you to bet on all your sports action. Of course, tomorrow on Locked On Grizzlies, it will be a travel day for DeMichael Cole. So it will be myself talking with you tomorrow, and we're going to break down 
Jaron Jackson Jr. And that's what I'm going to lead off with, DeMichael. One thing I'm going to spotlight tomorrow is I'm going to spotlight when it comes to Jaron Jackson Jr. You know, there's been some discussion among Twitter and things like that. Jaron Jackson Jr.'s usage in recent games in the fourth quarter, well, he has really dominated. But DeMichael, you know, it, it was great to see him in the game on a good note because he's been a bit up and down as of late. And we both talked about how important he is for the playoffs. Getting him consistent has to be at the top of any priority list when it comes to the Grizzlies, especially over this tough stretch of games over the next two. And, and you know, I mean, Sean, I don't think we, we are the only ones saying that. I think – this is probably something that the Grizzlies locker room is saying too. And this is and this is why, you know, I say that. Because I'm at the game and I'm sitting probably maybe 20 yards from the Grizzlies bench, not far at all. And Jaron Jackson, you know, first quarter picks up two fouls, goes out the game, kind of frustrated. Second quarter gets his third foul. So he's frustrated because that, that was on the offensive foul. So now he's really frustrated. He walks to the end of the bench, you know, did you know no interaction with other people? Third quarter picks up his fourth foul midway through the fourth. Now, you know, he's really frustrated. He's he's talking to the refs, has his hands kind of over his head, going to the bench. He's not in any type of rhythm. And you know, the the, the frustration is just reeling in for him. Four fouls. And throughout the course of those fouls, in the first quarter, in the second quarter, and third quarter. Each time I saw someone go over there and talk to him in the first quarter, Taylor Jenkins, you know, he's very active on the bench in terms of moving up and down the bench, coaching. He took about, I want to say maybe three possessions, Sean, where he was, he, he stood in front of Jaron Jackson Jr. And he kind of was talking with him as the Grizzlies were playing, pointing out certain things, talking with him, kind of talking him through that. Then the Grizzlies went in a huddle, you know, after one of the timeouts, I think this was in the second quarter. And I saw, you know, the Anthony Melton come up and talk to him for a little bit. Later in the game, Dylan Brooks did the same thing. And then in the third quarter, John ja Morant, you know, who who was there but, you know, didn't play, also came came up to him as well and had a conversation with him. So they know how important Jaron Jackson Jr. is to whatever the end goal may be. And, you know, that's probably a, a Western Conference Championship, NBA Championship. Jaron Jackson is one of the most important guys because defensively when you talk about the blocking the shots and things like that that puts them in position to do what they do best on offense and that's transition fast break points he sets the tone and i thought something interesting that i heard from the anthony melton sean was basically when, when he told us you know in the post-game press conference that he kind of played he and jaron jackson kind of play off of each other in, in terms of the steals and the blocks i hadn't really thought of it in that perspective, in those two players specifically playing off of each other. But the numbers, I mean, the Anthony Melton leads the team in deflections. Jaron Jackson Jr. leads the team in blocks. So you can see why he has that feeling. And I'm sure he tells Jaron Jackson that, look, I play off of you, you play off of me. And, and that's, you know, it's just interesting to see what the players and the coaches, Taylor Jenkins as well, how they treated Jaron Jackson through those first three quarters. There wasn't anyone, you know, just yelling at him. Um, I know Dylan Brooks did kind of say that he called some of those mistakes, you know, like brain farts, you know, correctable things, you know, but none of them really went over there to him and kind of just lit into him. It was all stay locked in, as they said, stay locked in, keep your head up. And they were rewarded. I mean, the fourth quarter, I think he scored 11 of his 15 points, Sean. But yeah, Jaron Jackson Jr., you, you hit on it. Uh, that's going to be a really good show uh, for the Locked On Grizzlies viewers tomorrow because he he is one of the biggest keys. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you talk about it, DeAnthony Melton, um, Jaron Jackson Jr., Dylan Brooks. Those are the main guys on defense who, you know, we talk about our general defense. It, it's getting better, you know, especially with Dylan Brooks being out there. But listen, our, our bread and butter is our ability, is our opportunistic defense. We're leading the league in steals, leading the league in blocks for a reason. And both DeAnthony Melton and Jaron Jackson Jr. play a big part in that. But all that's activity. And we talk about D T Taylor Jenkins always focusing on that activity. But to me, to Michael, this may have been the most complete game on Sunday of Desmond Bain's career. And I know that it happened without Jaw, but it needed to to get this victory. Listen, four, 24 points, three threes. Okay, we, 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 he's 24 points, three, four threes. That's his calling card. Seems like it happens at least once every three games. Seven assists, five rebounds, three steals. 
That's activity. And that's that activity is what is so key. The Grizzlies' superpower at times is their activity, and that's why it really translates to victories. Just a complete game for Desmond Bain. That level of activity in his decision-making, that's going to play a key, key role as him and Ja continue to grow into consistently being one of the best backcourts in the league. Yeah, Sean, and with Desmond Bain, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but a lot of people just don't realize this is a guy who spent most of his time at, T- at TCU in high school as a point guard. And the Grizzlies, you know, this offseason, he worked with, you know, the assistant coach, Darko Rodkovich, who coached in summer league. And they really worked on, you know, some ball handling things, some shooting off the dribble things to really put Desmond Bain in a position to do what he's doing more of now. You mentioned the seven assists. I mean, that was really cool to see because it wasn't just, hey, he's just swinging the ball and the guy makes, you know, a, a open three-pointer or something. He was really putting guys in good positions. I, I just remember a couple, you know, a couple passes that led to easy dunks that came from Desmond Bain. And he plays in pick and roll a lot, so you're going to need him to, you know, make those type of passes, make those type of plays. And then, again, we mentioned Dylan Brooks, his defense on on Kevin Porter Jr. Well, Jalen Green was guarded by Desmond Bain. Jalen Green had an off night as well. So that just goes to show uh, Desmond Bain is really – you know, he's rounding into that that type of player, and that's what it's going to take. You talk about this being one of the best backcourts in the NBA. It's going to take him becoming, you know, more known as not not only just a two-way player, but as a more multidimensional player on offense. I mean, we we see it. We see the cutting ability he has, but, you know, nationally, it's it's going to come in time, you know, with him just compete, just continuing to just repeat those same, you know, outputs over and over and over. Absolutely. And so there's going to be a lot to look forward to. Obviously, over the next few days, we're going to have everything in place for you. Again, this isn't just John Company facing off against Kyrie Irving and uh, Kevin. Uh, I was about to say Kevin Bacon. Where is my dad gun mine? Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving coming to town. But of course, Listen, we are so excited. This new era of Locked On Grizzlies with me and DeMichael, it leads to awesome conversations. And the number one source when it comes to the ESPN experience coming to Memphis and the Grizzlies is right here to my right, left. He's DeMichael. He's right there. But my point getting at is we're going to have plenty to talk about, but also DeMichael is going to have plenty of great insight when it comes to obvious his awesome work at the Commercial Appeal. DeMichael certainly want to give you the platform here to be able to talk with folks about what's coming up as far as stories that you've got coming out, obviously, leading up to what should be a great experience and day for all of us on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Sean. And, and you know, we're going to chronicle that, just that entire experience. And also, you know, being at, being down here in Houston, I, I'll have a, a fun story, I'll say, uh, that'll come soon, just more of one of those lifestyles type stories that I think people will really enjoy, you know, just from my trip down to Houston as well. So uh, a lot of good, good stuff on that end. But yeah, we'll definitely chronicle, you know, a lot of that um, in the commercial appeal and we'll discuss it here on Locked On Grizzlies. Lineup for the week is obviously me and DeMichael today. On Tuesday, it'll be myself. On Wednesday, we'll be talking all things Grizzlies, Nets, ESPN. DeMichael will be going with us potentially Thursday. And then on Friday, we'll be back discussing together the week that was the game against the Pacers and plenty of insight as to the Grizzlies getting started on what will be perhaps the defining stretch of their season as they go for the number two spot. For DeMichael Cole, my name's Sean Coleman. You can find me at StatsSAC on Twitter. Make sure you pay attention. Set those alerts for DeMichael's Twitter account when those stories come out on what should be a very fun week, but you can find him at DeMichael C. Locked on Grizzlies at Locked on Grizz on Twitter. And, of course, right here, hit the subscribe button below on YouTube. For DeMichael Cole, my name's Sean Coleman. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you again soon here on the Locked on Grizzlies podcast.